So you're playing Genshin Impact and you're looking for that little bit of extra boost on your adventures. Today, guys, we're going over the five crafted weapons you should absolutely craft if they're right for your character. Thank you guys for spending that time here today and let's get right into the video for you guys. The main character is a character that a lot of players out there are going to be utilizing and they do have a fantastic crafted weapon available to them in the form of the Iron Sting. The Iron Sting is going to be a one-handed sword that the main character will use and it has Elemental Mastery as the secondary stat line on this weapon. So that's going to increase the amount of swirl damage that you do with her Anemo type character skills, spreading the different elemental damages that she does have the ability to do. Also, the main character does have the ability to absorb the damage types of pre-existing pyro or cryo or electrical conditions on the enemy and do even more bonus damage with both her elemental skill as well as her elemental burst attack there and this infusion stinger ability on the iron sting increases the elemental damage that you do by a six percent for six seconds and this stacks up to two times so dealing elemental damage is going to give you this stacking damage bonus and you can refine this to be even higher than this right now and you're able to go ahead and get that extra elemental damage from the iron sting in conditions with your elemental skill and your elemental burst on the main character which is a fantastic way to be utilizing that character and you can use that character in that way all the way into the end game as your Anemo type support skill character, get the Viridescent Venerer set on them, and you're gonna have a fantastic combination for that character in the main character on the Anemo type subclass there. Now, if you are a bow user, the best crafted weapon that you can have access to right now, if you want to have a bow user do a massive amount of damage for you, is the prototype crescent. So the prototype crescent here has the attack percent substat on it so if you're using a main character maybe Fischl is your strongest character at the time of this right now and you want them to be out on the field doing damage getting them the best attack possible this is the way to go with the prototype crescent bow because it has that percent attack on the substat between these two bows and it has the ability of unreturning an aim shot that hits a weak point increases your movement speed by 10 percent but it also increases your attack by 36% for 10 seconds. So this is a fantastic way to get extra damage out with your elemental skills and your elemental burst with this prototype Crescent Bow because you'll be able to swap to that character, line up an aim shot on a weak point that the enemy does have, and then pop off your elemental burst or pop off your elemental skill between the two bows, the compound bow and the prototype Crescent Bow. This is by far the best one between the two of them. So definitely go out there if you're a bow user and you're looking for a bow upgrade and this sounds good to you, this is the bow for you to be using. Now moving into Great Swords, the prototype Animus is one of the best crafted weapons in weapons right now, easily available to Claymore users. The prototype Animus comes with sub attack percent. This is going to buff up all of your damage, whether it's your normal attacks, charge attacks, Elemental skills, elemental burst. This is going to be a extremely powerful weapon for any Claymore user out there due to the fact that it has the ability of crush. So on hit, normal and charge attacks have a 50% chance to deal an additional 240% attack damage to enemies within a small area of effect. The crush effect can only occur once every 15 seconds. This is a fantastic Claymore for pretty much any Claymore user out there right now whether it's Deluke or Shang Yun or anyone basically if you want them to brawl get in the face of the enemies and just deal out massive amounts of damage this is the sword for you it kind of speaks for itself 240 percent attack damage to enemies within an AoE approximately 15 seconds works on both normal and charge attacks and that 50 percent chance proc rate that's actually pretty high considering it can only proc once every 15 seconds get in there and spin to win with your charge attack proc that off and do just free bonus damage. Now, if you're a Noel user, you're going to want to craft the White Blind. Now, the White Blind is going to offer pretty much every other Claymore user less in terms of effectiveness, but the White Blind for Noel, it's pretty much made for her. It offers up percent defense as the substat on the weapon here, and the effect of refinement infusion blade here on hit normal and charge attacks increase your attack and defense by six percent for six seconds 
maximum four stacks. This effect can only occur once every 0.5 seconds. This is going to offer you an insane amount of attack and defense as well as damage on Noelle because during her ultimate, her damage also scales off of her defense and she also scales her heals and shields off of defense as well. And even though this effect only lasts six seconds, you can continuously proc it in a, a, with a charge attack, with a normal attack, keep that effect up as long as you need it to be up and then just swap off of her. So this is going to be the sword for Noel, the white blind, definitely craft this one if you're looking to increase her power level, increase her damage, increase your shields and your healing. It pretty much has everything for her to be effective in your party. Next up, we're talking about the prototype Malice. So everyone pretty much has access to Barbara as soon as you hit Adventure Rank 20. The prototype Malice is a amazing, amazing weapon for Barbara. It gives HP percent as the substat there most catalysts that we have access to don't have hp percent their elemental mastery energy recharge or something like that so this one is going to make her tankier her heals skill off of her hp as well and the ability here gilding is an insane skill for her on top of that using an elemental burst regenerates four energy every two seconds for six seconds for barbara additionally all party members will regenerate an additional four percent hp every two seconds for this duration so this is insane it's gonna help you keep your elemental burst up because that four energy that she's getting every two seconds for six seconds energy is what you accumulate to charge your elemental burst so once you use your elemental burst she's gonna get this energy to reuse her elemental burst it's gonna make her have that elemental burst way quicker all things considered with the prototype malice on that's 12 energy every single time you use your burst you're going to just get 12 of it refunded which is fantastic then on top of that not only do you have her burst for the actual burst healing that it does the large one-time heal on top of that you're going to also put a regen effect on your party so this is going to be hands down one of the craziest things that you can put on barbara and you definitely need to get out there and craft the prototype malice so those are by far the five best weapons for you guys to be spending that precious crafting resource on right now in Genshin Impact. Obviously, we didn't talk about a polearm, so let's talk about a polearm really quickly. Between the Prototype Grudge and the Crescent Pike, neither of these are actually that insane for the polearm users that we have in the game right now. But if you are using a polearm user that wants to stick out there in the fray and use their normal attack, their charge attack a lot then the Crescent Pike is where you want to go. This is because it's a very weird sort of weapon. It has physical damage bonus, as well as the ability of Infusion Needle, picking up an elemental orb or particle, normal and charge attacks deal an additional 20% attack damage for five seconds. This means that any sort of elemental damage that you are doing is not getting the benefit of the physical damage bonus. Even if your normal attacks and charge attacks, even though they're normal and charge attacks, if they're doing elemental damage because there's some sort of elemental imbue effect, looking into the future on a character like Zhao, this won't affect them whatsoever. But if you are using, say, Zhang Ling, and you don't really care about her teddy bear damage or her ultimate or elemental burst damage. You just want her to hit as hard as possible with her normal attacks and charge attacks. Maybe she's your main and damage dealer. You're using her in that way. Then you can go ahead and safely craft the Crescent Pike. She's going to get that full physical damage bonus. And you are going to be out there on the field picking up elemental orbs and particles, increasing her normal and charge attack damage uh, with an additional 20% attack damage for five seconds there. So with that said, guys, that's everything, guys. Hopefully this helped you out tremendously. You're not wasting crafting materials, crafting the wrong weapons anymore. And this is giving you the idea of what you guys need to be doing as you approach mid-game slash end-game in Genshin Impact.